I need a place I can elevate my soul Where my mind and spirit can be whole Where the truth is real and greatness is a norm Hello and welcome to this week's broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. All through this month, Pastor Godman has been sharing and teaching with us about biblical principles for building enterprises. One thing has shown through our discussions, the fact that wealth and riches and money flow in the direction of value being created. Today, we'll be speaking about a theme, why do businesses fail? And our panel of discussants will be answering questions from the audience and bringing tested wisdom from God's word to bear on this. Mrs. Timmy Tokbeo Lagbegi is the MD CEO of Six Sense Deco. And Mr. Femi Johnson is the managing director of Home Based Mortgage Bank. It promises to be a fantastic episode. Enjoy it. To become a money magnet, to become someone who can attract financial resources to yourself. You need to be someone who is positioned to create value in exchange because money flow in direction of value. I'll give to you according to your ability. Five, two, and one. God will not bless you beyond your capacity to receive. One of the ways by which, one of the greatest ways by which you increase your capacity borrow vessels is true learning one very important principle of selling is that goods are sold not bought goods are sold not bought people don't just buy things you have to sell them know your products know it in and out know it in and out you see the problem with many people is that they don't know their product they don't know what they have another principle of selling is that you need to ask people to buy also, I wanted to, to understand that 80% of sales are made after the fifth call. There's value in persistence. The reason why a lot of people give up cheaply is because of fear and we don't have the confidence that what we have will give value to other people. The reasons why businesses fail, and I know that um, nobody who's about to start a business is first thinking about failure but um, I think it's very important that we go over the reasons why businesses have failed so that they are pitfalls that we would ultimately avoid. I'd say one of the first primary reasons why businesses fail would be the fact that people venture into businesses for the wrong reasons. Um, I feel that people feel having your own business affords you more time, gives you more money, and ultimately you become your own boss and therefore you have, your own, you have time to do whatever it is you want to do. But I've come to understand that um, businesses are successful, therefore they do not fail because they, the people who've gone into them or into that enterprise have deep-rooted passion for what it is that they have ventured into. I believe that um, those who go into businesses because they want to meet a real need, those are some of the reasons why businesses, a business will succeed. And if you've got the drive and the positive attitude, that even when things are not going 100%, you have the positive attitude and you can persevere, I believe the business won't fail. Another reason I'd say businesses fail would be the lack of a good support system. Um, at this point, I would say um, I started business some 12 years back and um, I began doing business in my year one. I um, used to sell underwear. I had bought underwear for myself and they were undersized and I sold these underwear to my roommates. And 
there was a demand for the underwear because subsequently I got people asking me if I had more underwear for sale and I took up I took um, I took the opportunity all right and I began to trade and um, not too far down the line people started asking me for other garments and I then opened a boutique my point is um, it wasn't a passion it wasn't something that I keyed into or I particularly loved doing but it was something I was fulfilling an immediate need are we following yeah and um, in, follow, in following that need with the drive that I had right I started my business enterprise um, which brings me to my second point when you have a very strong support system um, I did this I did the underwear business and then I went on to doing a supermarket business I went on to doing having owning a nail studio I went on to doing I mean owning a supermarket and I realized that yes the business is where giving me some money but the drive and the passion wasn't quite there and when I talk about a good um, support system I realize a lot of people are in business that if they had the right people around them to advise them for instance right they wouldn't they would they would be doing what they would excel at better are we following my third reason would be that a lot of people want to start business big a lot of people feel that until they have this and this and this in place business hasn't started i'm an interior designer and very many times people say i'm setting up an office and i'd like you to come and decorate and i get there and everything is in place they've got the laptops they've got the staff they've got they've got pretty much everything but unfortunately the product itself is weak are you with me people and so I'd say quite a number of businesses should start from the uh, improving the technique of the products they are they're selling sorry I'm going to be speaking from the creative I mean to the creative industry because that's the one I'm in all right all right and so they're unrealistic projections people feel um, you just put in a little money and then you're going to get a lot out you know unrealistic financial projections overstaffing is another of those um, reasons major overheads fancy cars fancy offices the list goes on so I'd say my tip here would be to start small and grow the business organically you know start small start and let the business by itself begin to expand My number four reason would be the lack of training and the lack of skill. Um, I dare say that sometimes talent is not enough. Um, you've got the talent, but there's also a skill, there's a technique, there's a delivery. And um, in whatever it is we find ourselves doing, it's important that we learn the ropes. I want to cite an example of somebody in Bagada I used to live in Bagada and there was this man who made fantastic moi moi and um, you'd see really fancy cars park by his kiosk you know and it's amazing the guy sells out and by six o'clock the moi moi is finished and he had a variety of moi moi you know the ones with eggs the ones with sardines the ones with you know and I sat back and I thought about it this man had mastered the art of delivering moi moi as mundane as you might think it is the man was making a lot more money than a lot of white collared jobbed people you you understand what i mean he understood people's preferences all right and you know i want to take it as simplistic as that that in having a talent or a gift we've got to be we've got to know everything that has got to do with the product you've got to do know everything that's got to do with your product it's not good enough for you to say I'm just I'm a great artist you know you've got to know the different styles in drawing for instance it's not good enough for you to say I'm just I'm a good photographer the extra is to know the different angles the different lenses It's not good enough for me to say I know how to I have a flair for decorating 
What I need to do is to harness that flair and add skill to what I know how to do. Business failure for me is more like um, something that has several different causes. So you really can't exhaustively say why a business would fail. Yeah, I'll give you an example. There's probably to the eye of the person that designed this auditorium, there's probably one way that the auditorium can be arranged in a perfect way. Okay, so maybe you have eight columns by nine rows of seats, you know, and then three different major rows and all of that. So if you remove one seat from there, the auditorium is already scattered, according to that person. So there are a million and one ways you can scatter this auditorium from that person's point of view. But there's only one way you can arrange it properly. That's the same way business failure is. There's a million and one reasons and causes for failures of businesses. Every organization, no matter how big or strong, is vulnerable to failure. Large organizations fail, and small ones fold up even more. Then a bit of statistics. 40% of businesses fail in the first year. 80% fold up within the first five years of operations. More than 80% of those who survive eventually crash within the next five years. So if you do the maths, we are saying businesses that start, of businesses that start in the first 10 years, only 4% survive. Right? And we're not saying 4% thrive or do very well. We're saying 4% survive. So some of them are just barely surviving. And nothing says that those 4% will survive the next two years or five years or whatever they are after. Now, most business owners, how do people start businesses? Most business owners used to have a job or a set of skills, right, that they use to do that job. And at some point, they decide to be their own bosses. Maybe they're tired of, you know, their bosses or why should I be receiving this kind of um, pay or this kind of insults from this person and all. And then you just feel, you know, it's time to launch out. So you set up a business doing that same thing you were doing before your old job. Yeah, but over time, people learn that being self-employed is different from running a business. So one is, I know what I'm doing, I'm just doing this. Another thing is running a complex set of systems with people and all of that. And that's where a business is. Totally different from get, doing a job. Remember in your job, there are going to be different departments, different people covering different aspects and all of that. But once you launch out, you're on your own. Michael Gaba, in his book titled The E-Myth Revisited, states that everyone who owns a business is actually three people in one. Okay, so you're a technician, which means you do the business yourself. You're a manager, which means you manage the business. And then you're an entrepreneur, which means you drive the business. And it says that current statistics show that people that run businesses are 90% technicians, 3% managers, and 7% entrepreneurs. And it says for a business to be successful, there must be a balance of these three rules. In fact, it says that you have to be an entrepreneur 90%. You have no business being a technician. Your business will fail. You are wasting time on the wrong set of things. To so employ people to run that aspect, employ people to manage those people, spend 90% of your time being the entrepreneur. So quickly look at why businesses fail. First, I'll say is the lack of financial intelligence or knowledge. You have to be financially savvy. Every business has only one language, numbers. Not English, not maths, not Chinese. Sorry, not English, not Chinese, not whatever language, not French. It's numbers. That's the common denominator. So if you don't understand numbers, if you're not financially savvy, your business is bound to fail. Second thing is lack of understanding of the difference between profits and cash flow and turnover and what assets and liabilities are. So if I run a business, for example, and it brings in cash flows every day. You see people coming every day to buy. If I don't understand what portion of that cash flow is by profit, and what portion is just cash flow or turnover, then I'm due to fail because I will spend money thinking all this money coming in belongs to me. Again, if you don't understand what an asset or a liability is, and I like to use the analogy, if I run a business, it's not a transport business, and the car I've bought in my business does not generate income for me, then that car is a liability. It's not an asset. Because I'm going to be spending money on it on a day-to-day -day basis to buy fuel, to maintain, and all of that. And you're depreciating it on a daily basis. So how is it an asset? It's not adding value. Yes, I may enjoy the prestige of it carrying me around and all that. But if there's no core value it's bringing, then it's a liability. So we need to understand that. And then wrong partnerships. People partner with the wrong people. Either your 
partners in the business or suppliers, you know, or people like that, your value chain. If they are wrong people, your business is likely to fail as well. Next one is not starting small, despising humble beginnings. A lot of people want to start large. She's alluded to it, you know, you see the big office, all the computers and all of that, and no business. You need to start small and grow your business from there. And then people do not delay gratification. You want to enjoy the benefits from year one, or from day one, or from week one. It doesn't work like that. You have to delay gratification. The fact that you now own your business doesn't mean you must drive a brand new car, or a Mercedes, or whatever it is. Start small, delay gratification. You would enjoy the benefits when the company grows over time. They're not seeking wise counsel. Either because you think you know it all or whatever. People don't seek wise counsel. There are so many people around you that you can talk to, wise people that can point you in the right direction. Look for those kind of people and seek counsel. Then people don't test ideas before they launch out. So you have this wonderful idea and then you go and set up big to run that idea. But you haven't even tested it whether it's commercially viable. So it's one thing to have an idea, it's another to have a commercially viable idea. We need to test our ideas before we launch out. And then at times you have the right business idea, but wrong timing. So if today I wanted to do downstream oil and gas, and I put all my resources in, we all know what's happening there right now. I will fail big time. So it's the right idea, but wrong timing. Another thing is wrong, right timing, but wrong business idea. So again, today you can say, okay, there's a reemergence of the middle class in Nigeria. You know, money is moving around and all of that. So it's time, it's a good time to start business. Yes, it's a good time. But if you start business now, even though it's a good time, with a wrong idea, the business again will fail. And then, of course, lack of value proposition. Pastor was saying on Sunday, what are you selling? If you're not selling value, then the business will fail. You know, they say bullshit can get you into the door, but it cannot keep you inside. So you have to sell value. Something closely related to that for the kind of business I'm in is customer service. And someone said today on radio that customer service is the same as home training. That if you are well trained at home, there's no way you won't have excellent customer service. So it's something we need to ponder on. first thing is never be attached to a business. Never. So your business is not your wife, it's not your life. Always remember that. Be ready to walk away from your business and start a new business. What you're about, you're an entrepreneur, is about setting up businesses, it's about running successful businesses. People stay too long in businesses because they're attached to those businesses. They don't want to be seen as a failure, so they don't want to walk away from it and say, oh, I failed in this, you know? But I tell people that it's not all businesses that would endure till Christ comes. Some businesses are for a time, some are for a season and all of that. You need to know when to walk away from a business. And that's the thing. So you need to have markers along the way. So I say, I'm going into this business. Once I lose 10 million, I'm stepping away. Yeah? At the point of losing 10 million, I'm going to say, oh, you know what? If I lose another five, maybe that's when I will make money. And then after that next five, they're saying, okay, maybe another two... Just be disciplined, know when it's time to walk away, and don't feel bad walking away from it. It's amazing, I had this conversation with somebody last week, and it was in the line of consulting, and you know, the person was actually asking this question, and I'd say that um, there's so many small businesses that would want to have consultants you know, come into their business and, adv and have advisory services, and so, I don't think the fear of these large companies should be the deterring factor. It's got to be, have you got it in you to also stay, do, have you got the resilience in you, you know, to build, to get to the point where you're also a force to be reckoned with in that industry? Okay, just to say that, um, I mean, from the example you gave, I'm not sure that person wants to compete with PwC, KPMG. You have totally different markets. So if you're going into business to compete with PwC, KPMG, and I'll tell you straight, don't bother. It's a waste of time. Yeah? But because you need to stratify the market. Don't go for the big customers that they would go for. Don't go for people that are looking for a name or that can pay top money. Start small and pitch your tent lower and search your own market. 
what I usually say, and again, Jack Welch of General Electric used to say this. If you are not number one or number two, he says in General Electric, they had loads of subsidiaries. How do you know which subsidiary to close and which to open? He says, if we're not number one or number two in this industry, we generally move on. Stay where your core competence is. So the same thing, if you are going into a business, strive to be top three or top five in that sphere. But for consulting, like an example, KPMG and all those people are not your competition. You have different markets. OK, two things first. Um, the cash flows and all those things are nomenclature, yeah? I'm sure our great-grandparents that traded farm produce and all of that understood those things, but they just didn't call it those names. So let's leave the names and understand the things behind them, yeah? So that's one. But second, you've mentioned financial intelligence. I don't think that, I mean, you need to educate yourself. You need to equip yourself, yeah? There's no point starting a business if, like I mentioned earlier, it would be like pouring water into a basket. So no matter how much you fetch, everything is going to drain down. You need to go and get educated. Take a short course. Understand what these things are. That's the language of business. Finance, maths, calculation, computation. You are there to make money. How do you do money? By counting. What is counting? Mathematics or arithmetic? Yeah? So if you don't understand finance, and you want to run a successful business, even where you employ the best of people, how will you know when they are cheating you or taking your money away? So at least, you might not know it all, but the basic rudiments, you need to understand it. So it's critical, please. Let's develop ourselves. I think that um, an education in the field you're at is really key. Because that it's only then that you can sit back and say you, you want your business to evolve or get to the next level. If you're not um, fully competent in what it is that you're doing, it's almost impossible for you to say you can become innovative. Wow, what a fantastic episode that was. I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, I hope we have addressed a number of the questions that you might have had on the subject. But just in case we didn't touch on something that is important to you, why don't you send us an email at the email address that is scrolling at the bottom of your screen and we'll respond to you immediately, we'll get it. By the way, and just before we go, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5, Jesus has this interesting encounter with a bunch of fishermen, businessmen, who had failed at their businesses, who were despondent, were disappointed, were giving up on life. I don't know where you are today in life, in your career, in academics, in your profession, in your business. I don't know what you're giving up on. We would like to extend to you an invitation to the Son of God, the same one who transformed their life in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5. He stands at the door of your heart today and extends the same invitation to you. The Bible says, for as many as received him, God gives power, the power to become sons of God. If you're not born again, if you do not have a living and a working relationship with God, it is my privilege this day to extend an invitation to you. A simple prayer, I'll ask that you kindly bow your head and say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I respect the fact that you have paid the price for my sin. I respect the fact that Jesus came to die for me. So today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior. Wash me clean by the blood and Lord, strengthen me to be your child. If you said that simple prayer, you have fulfilled the requirements of scripture and you are now born again. We believe that God wants the very best for you through this month, through this year. We at the Elevation Church are praying for you and we believe that the grace of God will find expression in you. Find a Bible-believing church around where you live or if you're in the vicinity of the island or you can make it down to the Peace Center, please do come. We'll welcome you with open hands and in fellowship as we share the grace of God. Sunday mornings, 8 o'clock and 10 a.m., two services. God is doing awesome things here. And on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., we hold our midweek event. We're online. Our details are being scrolled on the screen. You can also follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. God is doing an awesome work on the earth, and we believe he's doing an awesome work in your life. Till we see you next week, stay blessed.
One thing about Calabar people is they are very respectful. For example, you meet him. You say, Okon, what happened? Why did they fight? You hear? My brother, God bless you. God, God bless you very well. I was standing here, Sierra. This young man walked up to me, Okon, Okon, Okon. He gave me break him. My brother, I have to retire now. I give him a tie. He give me a give me a tie. Okon. I'm not like anybody. They just want me, they just want you. I hope you're feeling me, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Listen to the house I remix. Hi, shake it. It no be you, it no be me. Hey, I'm feeling you, you're feeling me. Everybody Sunday, feeling forever, feeling the shake it. Hey, wonder feeling, a feeling, a feel alright. Hey, it no be you. Oh, wait, this is. Thank you. Say, it no be anybody. My church is a place where I meet God and He meets me. My church is a place of healing, grace and relationship. My church is beautiful. It's a place where there is mercy for me. My church is full of grace. My church is a place to grow spiritually and receive testimonies from God. It's a place where my kids have a great time learning. And I know they are growing in the knowledge of God. Join pastors Godman and Bola Akinlabi along with the family of real people on Wednesday 6.30 p.m. and Sundays first service starts 8 a.m. and second service 10 a.m. All at the Priestess Center, 3 Remy Olowode Street and New Lekki Second Roundabout on Niru Lagos. The Elevation Church. 